Hi guys, so former Tory leader Ian Duncan Smith took to LBC to defend Priti Patel, the Home Secretary, and her policy to ship asylum seekers from the UK to Rwanda. Now, originally people thought this was for processing, but it turns out to be a one-way ticket. Now, Smith attacked also the left for what he called, and wait for it, xenophobia. You can't make this stuff up. Here he was with fellow Tory Camilla Tomney. Have a listen. I think she's right, by the way. I think some of the comments made about Rwanda over the last week or so have been not only misinformed, but also at the same time deeply offensive to Rwanda and actually verging on the disparaging about an African country as though African countries are all in a terrible position that they can't manage their own affairs, whereas Rwanda actually uh, has uh, done incredibly well uh, fairly recently in managing its own economy. So, Okay, but... Boris Johnson and Priti Patel said we're sending people to Rwanda as a deterrent. But Ian Duncan Smith is saying it's a wonderful place. Also, this, you know, I have to ask the question, then why are you sending people away from Britain? Like, wouldn't be the best solution for these people. Like, <laughs> none of this makes any sense. So on the one hand, you say, Ian Duncan Smith here saying, well, Rwanda is a wonderful place for people to go. Don't know why they chose Rwanda, but they chose Rwanda instead of the UK. So we could process these people in the UK, but we've decided to send them to Rwanda uh, because it's a wonderful place. But then Boris Johnson said it's a deterrent. So how can it be a wonderful place and a deterrent? Somebody's lying here. Um, the whole idea that you disparage, it's because it's her doing it and because it's the Conservatives. So, you know, you get used to that. But a lot of these fast storms start on the left in terms of Twitter. The truth is, out in the public domain, most people who don't get involved too often with Twitter actually get the message about what she's trying to do, which is trying to discourage those who make these perilous crossings uh, and who end up, many of them, dying. And so the question really is, for those who disparage her, what would you do? And not one of them comes forward with a single comment that stops illegal migration and the abuse of the asylum system. Um, well, you're asking a number of different things there, but to stop this, you would provide safe channels. To avoid abuse of the asylum system, you would have a robust asylum system. You would have sufficient uh, staff to operate it. That's how you would end abuse, so-called abuse of the asylum uh, system. But to stop people from drowning in the sea you would provide safe channels. That's a simple thing you can do. You actually provide safe channels, pretty much, for people arriving from Ukraine. Why not provide safe channels for people arriving from other countries? It's not that difficult. But you're deciding not to do that. You're, prov you're instead saying, we're going to send you to Rwanda. It's not a deterrent. <laughs> On the um, Rwanda issue, though, obviously it's had a history of corruption. Um, there was also a previous scheme to send refugees there, and I believe a lot of them ended up being people trafficked. So it might not be the ideal destination for refugees, Ian. Well, we need to get into the details of that. Uh, Israel has a slightly different story about it because it tells all down to the management of how you manage these processes. If you don't manage them at the other end as you would if you were in Dover, uh, then the systems won't necessarily work. And the plan is to manage it as an offshore system, uh, not as a system just handed over to another country. That they. But this will be handed over to another country. It will be handed over to Rwanda. Or are you talking about having some sort of Guantanamo Bay situation in Rwanda, where you'll have a center, a British center in Rwanda processing refugees there. But then do these refugees, sorry, asylum seekers apply for refugee status in Rwanda or do they apply for it in the UK? Because if they're applying for it in the UK, they have to be in the UK. If they're applying for it in Rwanda, they have to be in Rwanda. Which is it? It, mo it makes more sense for them to arrive in the UK and claim asylum there. None of this makes any sense. And once again, this is 
the Tories trying to sell two different ideas here. One that, yes, these people are going to be processed, which they're not. They're being sent to, they're being people trafficked to, um, to Rwanda because they're not being processed there. They're being sent there and being abandoned. And of course, the big problem as well is that these people are determined to get to the UK. So as soon as they get out of Rwanda, you know, the, peop the government in Rwanda would be happy to take the money but they're not going to hold on to these people. They're not going to imprison them. It's, it'd be too expensive for them to do that. So they'll just let them go. And where will they go? They'll arrive in France to get to the UK. While all of this could be avoided by providing safe routes. It will be managed carefully as if they were in Dover. The key question is, what is the purpose and will it succeed? And the purpose is to be able to ensure that those who uh, are trafficked, and here's the key thing, they are trafficked by uh, people smugglers who will put them into these flimsy boats, crowd them into the gunnels uh, and set them afloat in the channel where there's probably the highest level of uh, ship tra shipping traffic in the world passing through there, so deeply dangerous, very open to storms, etc. And many have died and drowned as a result of that failure. So if the idea is to try and put to break that model, that financial model, the people smugglers say, oh, well, don't worry, when you get over there, you'll be able to stay. And people begin to realize they may actually be sent to a country far away and, and process there. Would Once again, he's talking about processing people. They're not being processed, they're being sent there. But I thought Rwanda was a wonderful place. <laughs> the people want to get to the UK because they speak the language or they have relatives, family in the UK. That's what they want. They, If you send them to Rwanda, they're going to try and get back to the UK. If you send them to France, they're going to try and get back to the UK. This is just an attempt to send people as far away as possible, hoping that they won't come back to the UK. But many of them will. It's extremely expensive. It's not going to work. It's, it breaches their human rights. Once again, are these people, when they're sent to Rwanda, are they making asylum claims, refugee status claims, in, a, in Rwanda or in the UK? None of this has been explained. Would begin to uh, to put the brakes on that thinking and therefore open the way to going in, uh, going in legally and doing it properly. That's the key. Refugees from Ukraine have safe routes to the UK. Refugees from other countries do not. Why is that? Shouldn't all asylum claims be treated equally? Shouldn't all people who arrive and make a, an asylum claim to arrive at the next stage, which is refugee status, be all treated equally? Why are these people being treated differently? Why is it people who arrive on these boats are being told, no, no, we're going to send you to Rwanda. Why are you not sending Ukrainian people to Rwanda? Anyone have any answers to that? Make sure the channel, the legal channels are properly open. Make sure that people can make their applications. You are in the government. What are you talking about? We need to make sure these things are open. You are in charge. How can you turn around and say, we need to make these channels open. We need to make sure that people can... You are in charge of the government. You are in charge of the process. You are in charge of the department. Why aren't you asking Priti Patel to allow more people in through these safer routes? Why aren't you doing that? You're not. You're, you're campaigning. You're su supporting her turning Rwanda into some sort of paradise and deterrent at the same time, which is going to fail. And it's already, I think... 150 million pounds has already been spent before anyone has actually been sp sent there. A waste of money and an absolute failure. All, of course, just to keep the, the, the Brexit racists and bigots happy. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.